Hey guys, Adam Crow here, and I have an axe to grind. Now, you know what sucks? What really sucks? When a band you really like breaks up. You know what's even worse? When a whole lot of drama comes out of it. Now, as you guys may know, my favorite genre of music is heavy metal. And, as such, I absolutely adore the 80s era, because that's when all the big names came out, or at least were popular. Uh, you had Judas Priest, you had Iron Maiden, Dio, Wasp, the list goes on. But there was one band in particular that I found pretty awesome, and I didn't discover them until, um... Actually, the late 2000s, um, I was looking through um, Dio's back, back catalog, trying to see what um, other projects he cameoed in, because I, I honestly can't get enough of that, that guy. And what do I find, but he actually played a villain in a album called Operation Mind Crime 2 by a band called Queensryche. And I said to myself, huh, okay, well how about I check out Operation Mind Crime 1 first, because it seems like it's a concept album. And concept albums usually have, have a potent story behind it. So I check it out, and my mind was blown. Operation Mind Crime is an anti-government album before being anti-government became, like, really cool. Like, this is before American Idiot came along and Green Day was like, Oh, fuck Bush! It's popular to go against the man! This was just a straight-up, honest-to-God message. Our government is crap. This is the result. Okay? And it wasn't just that either. It was a very compelling tale about... Um, about a drug user who gets wound up in this anarchist organization that winds up changing him for the worst. And you see him go through this inner tor turmoil while he winds up inadvertently destroying everything around him. And it was just so freaking awesome. And the music itself was absolutely beautiful. To a <laughs> My cat, ladies and gentlemen. Catzilla still lives. So, yes, Operation Mindcrime was absolutely amazing. And it's what got me into Queensryche. I mean, after that, I listened to some of their earlier stuff. I listened to uh, the 2006 cover album, Take Cover, which actually isn't bad. A lot of people say it is. I absolutely love it because it, it contains so many great covers. I mean, you have Black Sabbath's Neon Knights. You have um, the cover of Queen Innuendo, and then um, a cover of Jesus Christ Superstar, Heaven on Their Minds. It's awesome. So, why would I have a problem with such an awesome band, you, you ask? Well, ever since Chris DeGarmo left in 1997 to become an air pilot... Uh, their, the quality of their music has somewhat declined. And, unfortunately, this also involves um, the sequel, Operation Mind Crime 2. Turns out the highlight was Dio being on the album. Like, that's the only reason to listen to that album, because the rest is just emo garbage. I was severely disappointed by that. I mean... It's clear where the talent lied. I mean, apart from, like, like Jeff Tate's writing, and that seemed to have declined over the years. But, oh, and then, uh, in 2011, an album came out called Dedicated to Chaos. And I was like, all right, this sounds cool. Dedica Dedicated to Chaos? It's a very metal-sounding thing album name. This could be good. Now... Before I show you just how good it is, I'm going to leave a link in an annotation 
to the music video for Operation Mindcrime. This is them back in the 80s, back when they were in their prime. I want you to listen to it, and I want, even if you're not into metal, I guarantee you, you will like it at some level. You will respect the quality. You done listening to that? Good. Now, here is the, si the single they released for ded Dedicated to Chaos, and it's called What We Do. What is spelled W-O-T. This was kind of a warning sign for me. And I'm going to play it for you right now via my speakers. And I'm going to try and simulate the reaction that I had. Queen's right Cabaretia. This was another warning sign. Now, here I was like, did I click the right video? Yes, this is Queensryche's official website. Yes, this is from Dedicated to Chaos. Yes, this is Queensryche's YouTube channel. Okay. Is it April Fools? No, it's not. Holy fuck! This is Queensryche! This is... This... Is Queensryche! This is supposed to be called Heavy Metal! I'm sorry, what?! So yeah. As you can imagine, I wasn't too happy with this. And... The other sing single, I believe it... What is it called? Um, Get Started? That wasn't any better. It sounded like a traditional pop rock song. So that was when I was made fully aware that Queensryche was indeed declining. Like at first I was kind of in denial because Mind Crying 2 had a little bit of quality to it. Take Cover, not the best album in the world, but it's still good. Dedicated to Chaos was just a heaping ball of what the fuck. And apparently American Soldier was too, but I didn't, didn't bother with that one. After dedicated, to, after dedicated to Chaos, I was no more. No more. And, that, and it doesn't stop there. Because recently, it's come to light that the band has had a lot of drama over over the past couple years, specifically with the lead singer, Geoff Tate. Now, what Tate was doing, here's an example of a couple things that he was doing, apparently, according to Wikipedia and several other articles. He was stealing money to fund their opening band, um, using money, using band money for other projects, and withholding the rights for an Operation Mind Crime movie. Now, I always thought Operation Mind Crime would be great as a play or as a movie. It actually was going to be made as a Broadway play at one point. But he completely screwed that over because Jeff claims that's all him. He wrote everything. When the, when the rest of the band contrib contributed just as much as he did. And it just came to a point where Jeff parted ways with the band and replaced him with Todd LaTorre. He, was the, he is the current lead singer for Crimson Glory as well. And he's actually not bad, but I'll get to that in a minute. Now, naturally, you would think, okay, well, Jeff's going to started solo gig and that's that's just going to be the end of that you're going to have basically an Ozzy Osbourne Black Sabbath scenario where it's the solo act versus the former band no turns out Jeff Tate is calling his new band Queensryche when the other band is still using that name 
So they go to court, and my God, the judge makes the most stupid decision. She decides, okay, you both can use the name. There, so now there are two Queensryches running around. Jeff's version and Todd LaTorre's version. Well, I shouldn't say Todd LaTorre, because he's obviously not the band leader. But it's just... Why would you allow that to happen? With such a big name like Queensryche, there should only be one. Especially when Jeff's version sucks ass. At first, I actually had a glimmer of hope for the new Queens, right? Because Jeff actually got some really good band members. He got, um, apparently Kelly Gray. He was from, he was actually from the former Queens, right, as well. Or, not former, original. And better, if I might add. He got Rudy Sarzo. Later on, he got Simon Wright as the drummer. And if you don't know who these are, they're the band members for Dio. Dio, ladies and gentlemen, if you... Okay, for my non-metal fans out there, that's a big deal. Because Dio was the voice for heavy metal. Like, his vocals were considered by many the best of all time until he passed away in 2010. So yeah, having, the bit, having those members was a big deal. And on top of that, they also got K.K. Downing from Judas Priest. He's supposed to be in retirement. They got him out of retirement to do this album. So I was just like, okay, despite Jeff's writing, the kind of star power that's behind this, they cannot fuck it up. They did. Immensely. It got, it, normally... Even with a bad album, I can still listen to it until the end, at least once. After a couple of songs, just hearing the, the generic instrumentals and Jeff's vocals, which I'm sorry, dude, you're too old to sing. I normally don't say that about too many metal frontmen, but you clearly do not have what it takes to sing anymore. Because... It feels you sound like a dying animal. So hearing that on top of everything else, on top of that being so poorly rushed to meet the the April twenty third deadline, it was just such a mess that I I could not listen to it. How do you fuck up an album? with members from Dio and Judas Priest. You have to you have to suck on such a massive level to do that. And that was your only selling point, dude. The only selling point was the quality of your music cuz no one likes you at this point. You you have screwed the band over so much and acted like such a self-obsessive asshole that your only hope was to come out with a good album. You didn't! No one is going to listen to you. Now, granted, the the Queen's Reich with Todd LaTorre, they, they released uh, two sing singles, Redemption and I think Where Dreams Go to Die. They are not the best songs that Queensryche has released, but it, they're still listenable. They are still rather good. I, I can't say the same for Jeff's version, and it's, it's just... Okay, the reason I'm making this video is basically to ask, Jeff, what happened? Why, why suddenly, somewhere down the line, you decided to just hog all the credit and all and all your band's funds? Why make why ruin something that was so great? I mean, I know things might have changed since Chris DeGarmo left. I mean that that's not in question here, but. 
I still believe that he was capable of making something great. I mean, he at least tried. But lately, it's just been... I, I have the feeling that he wants to do his own thing. But still, that, that's not metal, but try to keep a metal name. For popularity's sake. And it just doesn't work. All you're doing is is disappointing and angering your fans. <sighs> Basically what I want out of the situation is for Jeff to just stop. You had your chance. You blew it on such epic proportions. Just go on, do your solo albums, do your own thing. That's what that's what Richie Blackmore did. Like after Rainbow and Deep Purple, he went off to do Renaissance music. And you know what? All power to him. Because even though I would have preferred him to still go on doing Rainbow. I I don't want him to do it if his heart's not into it, because it, if it if that's the case, it just turns out to be crap, as evidence here. Do what you want to do, and just leave the rest of us out of it, please. Let us enjoy the the real Queensryche. So you can so you can let Rudy Sarzo and Simon Wright go back to the good music. Let them go back to Dio Disciples and and play the songs that they're famous for. Hey, hey. Well, this has been my axe to grind. This is Adam Crow signing off and saying, please don't let this happen to you.